My name is Jacob Spellis with Vital Health. Thank you so much for watching this video. I want to give you the top five ways to win at recovery. And the reason why this is so important to me, you know, we'll talk about both recovery, you know, from substance abuse and mental health. This month is Mental Health Awareness Month. My personal story, you know, when I was 18 years old, I was incarcerated for drug trafficking with untreated mental illness and substance use disorder. When I was in the county jail, this pastor came to speak to us one day and and I prayed to lower my bond. You know, when you're incarcerated, they put money over your head so you can get release. And I remember telling the pastor, I need to pray to get out of jail. And he's like, that's not how it works with God. And I said, what? And he prayed for me. He's like, I'm gonna pray for your life to change. And I remember that day, I was in the fourth floor of the county jail, Southwest, cell nine. And I remember going back to my cell and everything was lifted off my shoulders. And I always try to think at that moment, that's where all my cravings went. When I talk about the five tips, you know, it's not kind of coming out of some sort of textbook or something. Uh, you know, I'm a licensed social worker for over 10 years and worked in the field before that. So I've seen many, many people's life change and mine as well. So with that being said, the first thing is that everything will change. I think a lot of times people realize like the life's gonna get 10 times better, but I would always tell patients and other people, family members, like everything will actually get worse because you're dealing with stuff sober. You're actually dealing with stuff. Everything will change. People won't like you, friends will leave you, all type of chaos and, and stuff and everything will change. But you gotta remember like, I didn't come this far just to come this far. You know, a lot of times my friends will say stuff like, you've changed or you did this, you might talk different, you might dress different. That's the whole point. We did all this work. So when I recover from any substance or I'm recovering from depression, your perception will change. Like a lot of times with people with mental health, like people with bipolar disorder, for example, they hate that they can't be so crazy of and on the go and running and stuff that they gotta be, quote, normal. Stuff will change when you're taking care of your symptoms, you know? With that being said, you know, number, you know, two tip, I guess, would be to sincerely forgive yourself, you know? I work with a lot of people and they think, why are they using substances? You know, they got children. Well, the, the reality is that people aren't using because to get back at their children or something, they're using because of the guilt and the shame that they weren't in their lives. Forgiving yourself is the most important part. It's easy in recovery to get distracted by helping others, by overdoing it, by becoming an overachiever and stuff, And but we never can forgive ourselves. You know, some of the damages that you do, you know, I suggest getting into therapy or some sober support group, a church group, a 12-step meeting. There's a lot of work to do there for making your amends per se. With that being said, we don't want to, you know, criminate ourselves or make ourselves feel guilty every day. I see a lot of people in recovery do that type of stuff, but the best way I always found to forgive myself is one, apologize maybe to the people that we need to make apologies for, but actually mean it. Because if you apologize without change, this is kind of manipulation. You know, I see it all the time. People on phones, people calling their moms, I'm gonna get sober and have no intention of doing it. But that loved one thinks you are. So when you forgive yourself, you heal yourself. Just like if you break your leg and they put a cast on it and they work together, it's the same thing on your brain when it comes to recovery. My next tip is to become a and when I say that is, you know, it's kind of harsh, but like ones pick ones and tens pick tens, right? Misery loves company. So if I were to start using substances, you know, the same dope house, the same bad places, the same friends would open you with open arms. But when you're trying to change those peoples and places and stuff, it's hard to get into those atmospheres. So study, work hard, like you're training. Like, you know, I think about professional bodybuilder and they're working out, let's say six, eight hours a day. Same thing in recovery. When we're fixing our brain and the way we think and the way we act, you gotta become the best version of you. You know, a lot of people have excuses. I don't have access. Today we live in a day, you can look up any video on YouTube. Libraries have free books. Put all that stuff into you. We know the data. You know, when you speak to like a piece of rice negatively, it shrinks and that's not even a living thing. So imagine we do that to ourselves. Like we talk to ourselves worse than we talk to some of our own worst enemies sometimes. And that's scary. When we become a 10, I'm not just speaking about, you know, looks or something I'm talking about internally. And that's what we strive for in recover, I think is making the best version of you every single day. Next tip, you gotta get outside support. Family and maybe the loved ones that were affected by our addiction can be great support, but they also remember all the damage that you did to your to your 
yourself and to the family where you're there on Christmas. You miss Thanksgivings. You know, you might have stole some stuff. You might have done stuff that you might not even remember. You know, so again, outside support. So therapists is some support, somebody that you like and trust and you know, all that stuff. Finding somebody at a local church is good. For me, in my personal journey, you know, I was kind of young and when I got out of incarceration, I didn't really have a lot of friends who didn't commit crimes. And we might be two good people, but we're like oil and water. We just don't mix, we do bad stuff. I don't know, we just have those friends, like they're good on their own, I'm good on my own, together we end up in jail or something like that, you know, it just seems out outrageous you know so one of the thing I, I i always got for outside support was i went to college you know and i assumed like everybody at college was doing these crazy parties and you know doing drugs all the time to study none of that happened i never got invited to any of the parties or anything like that it's always find the cream of the crop one tip like when i was in college and we'd be doing reports together i would ask like hey what's your gpa uh, 1.2 probably not the best part you know or are you excited you know do you even come to class i would find the best person in that room to team up with to do the project so same thing in the recovery is you got to find the best people in your life that's going to support you also find people that won't put you down because we're coming into this world of recovery with open wounds and if you keep pressing it and pressing it and pressing it, you're trying your hardest but somebody keeps bringing up that you know you stole ten dollars 20 years ago or that you're not nothing or you're just a junkie you're just an addict that plays on your on your psyche you know so i think that's so important to get some people that don't have outside support you know just like in marriage if you call uh you know your wife's or husband's friends they might be a little biased but if you get somebody outside the group that can hold you accountable and see every perspective and just give you a non-judgmental opinion you know i think that's good you know in early recovery you don't want to make very fast decisions my last tip is don't forget where you come from don't forget where you come from in a sense that you know you can make a couple mistakes and be back where you came from you know so it's not where you come from it's where you're going it's so important you know that i've always lived that that by that motto you know because I could trash myself, you know, in and out of incarceration, hurt my family, hurt loved ones, hurt friends that sometimes I don't even remember. I always remember that, you know, if I make a couple bad decisions, I could wake up on the stack of bunk in the county jail thinking, man, I had it, I was doing good. Or, you know, remembering that these places are bad for you in recovery to go to, you know? It's like, you don't have the strength to go back to the old neighborhood. You don't have the strength to do some of these things because you're, you're learning, your brain's healing. You know, it takes on average two, three years for your brain to sometimes heal just from the, the use of substances. Always remember that, you know, you have a fair fighting chance every day that you wake up in recovery. These are just some of my tips. You know, if you want maybe more tips, you have a loved one that's in recovery or maybe yourself, you're just starting off. You know, we can share some of our stories online or maybe some of the people that are actively going through treatment at Vital Health anytime. So leave a comment, a review good or bad, you know, we don't, we don't mind. Thank you so much. Jacob Spellis with Vital Health.